Welcome to Land the House. I'm Seth. I have a hybrid system under my house for hydro and solar that produces a good bit of power for use in the house. But with my grid tie limiter inverters, as soon as the main power is off, whole system shuts down. So I'm going to be installing this 3000 watt inverter. It's a pure sine wave, 42 volt input. It's the uh, reliable electric. So 3000 watt and then it has a 6000 watt um, surge. So if you want to see a more detailed review of this, you'll have to go to my tools, tech and gear channel. I have a link in the description down below. In today's video, I want to install this. So it's going to go right over here on this wall, which is going to be close enough to my batteries to get some pretty good power. So that being said, let's go ahead and get this installed. I'm going to try to make this as straightforward as possible. We will hook up some stuff to this inverter and see how well it works. So let's go ahead and get to it. I know my wiring is an absolute disaster, but uh, it makes sense to me. So what we're working with here is a 48 volt battery bank. So we've got two sets of 48 and then we've got the hydro midnight classic, the solar midnight classic, and then these two grid ties here are pumping power into the house. So like 187 Watts, yeah, 150. And, uh, so that's what the house is currently using. Um, so that being said, I'm going to hook up probably from this, uh, bus over here for the negative, And then for the positive, I'm probably just going to pull from right here. I'll have to see. I've got to double the cables because this thing can pull 6,000 watts and at 48 volt that's like 125 amps. So uh, it's going to be more than one cable would be able to pull at 4 gauge. So I'm probably going to double those up. We'll have to see where I can hook that up at. Um, but for now, let's start off by installing this board as the back of the system. For step number one, I'm going to hang this inverter by this board here. So I'm just going to put a couple of holes up here at the top. <laughs> First time I've really used this hammer drill, it does not mess around in putting a hole in something. I want this to be pretty close to my batteries. So I think about right here, should be good. So let's just put our first hole right there. Yeah, that hammer drill. Nice stuff. Oops, too far. I brought a level down here so we can make this look pretty decent, hopefully. Turn this back over to hammer. Cool. All right, there's our board on the wall. Well, the logo on this thing is like this, but my terminals are on that side. So I think I'm gonna mount it upside down and hopefully it doesn't make any difference. Um, well, I guess we're going to find out. So we'll put one screw up here. And then we'll level this thing out for another one. Okay, right there should do it. Okay, I think that will be sufficient. Now that I have the inverter hanging on the wall, let's talk about the connections. The positive here needs to go to either this point, this point, or over here on one of these switches to pull from the battery. It'd be best if I could get straight from the battery, so I'm going to try this one right here. And that will go up to here, and then on this side is the negative, and that just needs to go over to my little bus bar. So moving over to this side. We've got the negative, the ground, and the positive. So the positive wire is going to go from here over to this relay. 
and that will be activated by the Midnight Classic down here on the DC side. Um, so basically there's a an auxiliary port in here that will read the battery and then say on or off based on a low voltage. So uh, this I think will shut off around 40 volts, which is too low because my 48 volt battery, uh, I don't want it to drop that low. So I mean, maybe 46 is as low as I'll go. I'll have to see. So basically if the power in the house that's being used pulls the battery down with this too much, it shuts off the um, the uh, AC side at like 46, 47 volts. And the inverter doesn't have to be reset because it still thinks that it is above voltage. Um, so the ground is going to go to earth ground and then also be uh, going up to wherever my receptacle is. And then the negative will just be the negative of the uh, the wire system there. So, all right, let's go ahead and make those connections. The auto parts store only had a black and a red wire. So I'm gonna double this up and it's gonna be the red wire. So I'm gonna put some tape around it and indicate that this is uh, what it is. But anyway, so I need to have three on here, which might be a little bit awkward. Let's see what we can do. I think what I'm going to do is back that screw out and put one of these on the other side just so that it's not uh, all bunched up here as it is. So let's do that real quick. I know the lighting on this side is kind of poor, but I'm just going to be taking those two cables and setting them up onto that positive. And that is because I want to have the double cable to prevent any kind of overheating of that wire. It's a bit hard to see in this low light, but I'm gonna use this lower hole of the bus bar to connect my negative. It's a bit hard to get the camera to focus in this low light, but I'm going to use the last hole of this bus bar to have my negative wire connected. Now there is a small, I guess, uh, weak link in my system. This wire right here, which you can hardly see, is about four inches long, and that's what connects the bus bar. Um, but it is a four gauge, and we're going to be using the double four gauge to go from the bus bar over to the off-grid inverter. Um, but I shouldn't be using the grid tie inverters and the off-grid inverter at the same time. So I think we're gonna be okay as far as uh, the load goes. Um, but anyway, let me just go ahead and attach these to this lowest hole of the bus bar. I've got a nice roll of 10 gauge wire that I'm gonna be using to bring the power from the inverter into the house. And I've got a hole in my old office floor right here that I'm going to stick the wire down in there grab it from the other end and pull it over to the inverter. And I'm probably just going to use my bookcase here to have a little receptacle that I can run the internet from or uh, run an extension cord over to the fridge, whatever power needs I have here for this off grid. But for now, I'm just gonna poke this down into that hole. It took me a while, but I got this 10-3 wire run from upstairs in my office down here to the inverter. So I'm just going to give myself plenty of room and then cut this in half, hopefully. I don't need 10-3, but uh, a friend of mine found this wire in a dumpster and uh, gave it to me. So I think it should work out pretty good. Uh, but that right there should give me enough room to get to this uh, relay and then over here to the uh, inverter itself. So let's see what we can do here. We've got to strip back the sheathing and then get the uh, wire put into these screws. So let me do that real quick. All right, here's the plan with the wiring. I want to put the neutral there, the ground in there, and then I'm going to have to have a small wire for the hot to go from here to here. So for now, what we can do is get 
one leg of the ground up under here. And I have to get another ground wire to also go up under here. And I want the negative to go under this bottom one here. And I'm gonna have to move this, I believe, because it's just too close to being in here. So maybe up a little bit would work out well. I've cut a small piece of wire to go here into the relay. Ten gauge is pretty big for this thing, but I think we'll manage. Okay, there we go. And so this side just needs to go down here into the inverter. Now I have not connected the ground yet because I need to run a ground from here outside to connect to the house ground. I ran the ground out from my vent here and over to the earth ground right there. Should be just fine. Before I turn the inverter on, I wanna make sure that the wire going upstairs is connected to something. So I've got a regular box with a regular outlet here. That's gonna be the place where the power goes to. And so I'm just gonna put this box here on the bottom of my bookshelf. Um, and hopefully that's gonna be good enough to plug stuff up into the internet or uh, I can always use an extension cable if I need to uh, power the fridge or something else. So I'm just gonna install this real quick and I will bring you back as soon as it is complete. Okay, none of this is very pretty. I'm gonna come back later and put it all into some conduit or something to keep it from being exposed. But for now, we just have an outlet so we can test this out to see how well it works. Installing this system has taken me all day, but it's almost done. So I've got all the wiring done as far as uh, up into the house. So now I've got to do two more things. I've got to run the little tiny wire from the Midnight Classic over to the uh, relay and that will turn that on based on battery voltage and then I've got to connect these two to the top up here on the negative and it will be ready to go. It's super dark down here but in order to get the relay working I need to make sure that these jumpers are moved over and then there's auxiliary one port right here and I'm going to run some of this little tiny wire from that spot over to the relay and that's what will cause that to trigger on and off. This is the first time I've ever hooked up a 48 volt battery to a 3000 watt inverter. It was quite a spark. So uh, got these connected now and our battery is at 51.7. So this thing should turn on no problem. Let me check to see. I don't see the light on our relay yet so I don't think that's working. So nothing will happen from that, but we can at least test the plugs here. So let's go ahead and flip this on, see what happens. All right. So we got 51.1 right there, 51.6. All right, I've got a 600 watt drill down here. We can connect to this inverter and see how well it's working. Well, it seemed pretty smooth. That's pretty good. Very nice. After a long struggle, I finally found out what was wrong with my relay. I uh, didn't have a setting right in here, but it's working now so we can go upstairs and see if the outlet that we installed is working properly. Just gonna plug up one of these studio lights here and see if this outlet works. We now have off-grid power. That's really awesome. Power enters into this side right here. And then on this side, you can either use the 
two plug-ins or you can hardwire it like I've done right here. And so that wire jumps over here to this relay which is currently turned on because the battery voltage is maxed out at 56 if that'll focus maybe maybe not oh, there we go 56.9 volts and uh, yeah so it works just fine you can see over here this says 56.2 and 122 on the output there okay no joke it took me about six hours to get this fully installed yesterday i'm not exactly sure why uh, there were just a bunch of little things that happened that uh, kind of messed me up one of them was i was pushing the wrong arrow on the midnight classic to go into the uh, diversion mode I, it always was saying uh, uh manual off and uh, turns out I just pushed the wrong button. Um, but anyway, so I've never hooked up a high wattage inverter to a 48 volt battery bank before. Let me tell you, I first touched that terminal and there was quite a spark. Um, so I looked up some videos on how to do that and it said unless you have a resistor to touch slowly and charge the capacitors, it's gonna do that. So um, I just, slammed it on there real quick and held it while it was uh, I guess it just sparked real quick and then charged those capacitors um, wasn't fun <laughs> definitely scared me I wore uh, safety glasses after that initial time um, but anyway uh, if you want to watch the actual review where I go a little bit deeper into this inverter then check out my tools tech and gear YouTube channel I have a link to that in the description down below and also you can buy this on Amazon or eBay or on the Reliable Electric website. I paid 400 bucks. The price jumps all over the place on these, um, but so far in the two days that I have played around with it, it seems to be working just fine. I'll probably do an update in the future and let you know how it's doing. But anyway, thanks for watching this install video. Leave me a comment down below and I will see you in the next video.